Rabba, you see clearly from Rabba that even though she died, there's still a kanas payable. And that is, is a direct contradiction to what Abaya had said. But the Gemara has a question. Let's think about it. If she had a child before she was a virus, while she was a Naira, so it must be the child was born in a in a small six month window of Nairus. Well, that means she must have been impregnated before she was a Naira. Now that will fit the problem. Is she was impregnated before she was Naira. She was, she was impregnated and she was a Tana by her perpetrator, by her violator, right? Now we have a machlokes tanoim. If a woman who's a tana is violated, does she get knas? So this would only fit in if a woman who's a tana would get knas, right? She was a violated tana, she'll get knas. But we have another problem: a woman who's a tana, the Gemara tells us, cannot possibly conceive. So how is this possible that a child should be born to this woman while she's a virus? And that was the challenge we were dealing with. So the Gemara said, "Umima abra, how could this woman possibly?" Become expecting. But Tony Rav Bibi Kamei Rav Nachman. Rav Bibi said in front of Rav Nachman, Sholish Noshim Misham Sholish Pemoich. There are three women who are allowed to use contraception. Eluhein. Now Rashi learns they're allowed to use contraception. Toysu says they should use contraception because there's a, a danger involved. Eluhein Ketana Ume Uber Sumanika, and we're going to focus on the Ketana. Ketana Shemet Es Abe Betamis. If a Ketana becomes pregnant, she could become pregnant, but she's going to die and her child's going to die. So you see from here that if Ektana becomes pregnant, she will not survive, nor will her child. Well, in this case, she didn't survive, but we're talking about a child surviving. That, that was Rabbi Shiloh, if the child will be entitled to the Knas. And Muber Shemetasa Uber Sandal, this is something that I don't understand. It means maybe she already has a fetus developing in her, and if she becomes pregnant again, then it's going to cause a problem. Like I never knew it's possible to have a pregnancy in middle of a pregnancy. We had before we didn't understand it then either. Okay, and Manika, and Manika, and it could be it's applying. To, it could be if you apply today's uh, today's uh, approach in the medical world that a man can get pregnant. Then I understand because I could be ten pounds overweight and then be another ten pounds overweight. So it's not a steer, right? Shema tasa uber sandal. Menika, a woman who's nursing, should not get pregnant. She has because her, her milk could dry up and she'll have no way to feed her child. They didn't have uh, baby bottles in those days. Vezoi Kitana, what is the age that we call a Kitana, meaning the age where if she becomes pregnant, she will die? Between the ages of 11 and 12. Pachas Mikan, if she's under 11, we're not worried she's going to get pregnant because she can't conceive at all. The yes, okay, if she's over 12, she'll survive. And therefore, Misha Meshes Kedakta Bahila. Therefore, there's no need for her to use contraception. The Reb Mayor, the Chachamu Waimer, Achazu Bachazu Misha Meshes Kedakta. You let everybody, Lutashim, she don't use a, a contraceptive method, but so she's Misha Meshes Kedakta Bahila, she can go on with life as normal. And they'll have Rachmonis from Shemaim to protect her from any type of danger. I believe it means Hashem um, saves even fools. Is that what it means? That's a pesi, yeah. So, so the problem that we have over here is how did this woman become pregnant? If you're going to claim that no, she became pregnant when she was a Naira after she was already 12 years old and had some money. And she gave birth also before six months. Because Rashi tells us that the maximum period, the Gemara is going to tell us, the maximum period is six months. Is it possible for a woman to um, carry only six months and the child will be born, a healthy child? There's only a six month period. It's impossible for a woman to have conceived and have given birth in such a short period of time. So, when exactly, did, how exactly is Rabbi's question possible? That a child was born, a child was born, um, and then she died, and then her progress arrives. And the question is, will the child get the knas or will the father get the knas? 
maybe when it says it means it's a minimum of six months from when a woman becomes a virus from when a woman becomes a naira till when a woman becomes a virus but it could be longer than six months and maybe this particular woman it took her longer to mature and therefore we'll say she became expecting when she was 12 and she had some on them which means she was a naira and her her period of virus ran her period of nairis lasted longer than typical so nine months later she had a child and then after that she died and then after that she would have become a virus so maybe that's what we're talking about and that's the that is the case where Rava has his question who gets the knas frankly more you cannot say that because it says meaning there's only six months not more and not less so once again Rabbi Shiloh, exactly what are the circumstances that led to Shiloh? This is the Shiloh Rabbi. Yesh bagger bekever u pokav. I don't know any bagger bekever veloi pokav. So let's see Rashi. U pokav, poka tvias av, vizocha halo for masha biyado. The question is not if there's a child. Of course, there cannot be a child. It's impossible that that occurred. But maybe if there's Bagar Bekever, the father loses his claim and nobody claims. And this perpetrator gets to walk free. So do you say, Yesh Bagar Bekever, Pokahav, and Rashi's Pokah Tavias Av, and therefore Bezocha Halo, Bamasha Biyadi, and this Halo, this fellow, this lowlife who violated her, gets to keep his money. She ain't Baldine Kayim, because there is nobody to take him to the entire. Because the girl is no longer alive and the father at this point is not in control because even if she would be alive she would be independent so you might say if she died so wouldn't her father automatically arson all of her interests the territory is no if there was actually money that belonged to her of course the father would have yarshin that interest but knas is there's no chiv at all until the Besan declares it, and they had not yet been in Besan. So there was nothing for the father to Yarshin at the time of her death. So therefore, therefore, Lav Since she didn't collect on it yet, there is nothing for the father to Yarshin, and this perpetrator gets lucky that since his victim died, he doesn't have to pay Knas. So the question is. Will there be, be a Yerusha? Will there be a Yerusha to the father? That's that is Rav Shaila. So let's think. Whatever it, whatever the case is, clearly Rav holds the fact that she died does not patter him from class. Now, indirectly, he might not have to pay class because there's no one to claim it from. Him. But as far as it being excluded from the din of class, it's definitely not. So. The Gemara said on Ahmed Beis that was what was clear to Abaye that there is no din knast after she dies was a suffix to Rava. In this Nusach, it's not a suffix to Rava. Rava clearly says there is a din knas. So he clearly for sure argues on Abaye. Um, so that's not what the Gemara was referring to on Ahmed Beis when the Gemara said Rava has a suffix. But we have another version of what Rava Shaila was. And according to this version that we're about to learn, we'll see that Rava does have a Sovak, in fact, if there's a Din Knas after the victim dies. This is how he asked the question. Does Misa create Bagris or not? Marbarabashi is a Prashi. He doesn't understand, or he doesn't have the Shiloh of Rava of Bagar Bekever, meaning the questions that we had before, that if, if she died as a Naira and they didn't go to Din until she became a Bagris, does the father Yarshin that, and therefore there is a Baldin, and therefore Knas is payable, or does the father not Yarshin it, and the Knas is not payable, like we said a moment ago? Ella, this is the question. In Mesa ben Arusa, a woman who was violated and died while she was a Naira, Mi Paka does, does, uh, it, 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 it does, does she lose it in class? 
he bagrish to mechayim, like when she becomes a bagrish when she's alive, oiloi. Well, a high lishna, the mar baravashi, according to this approach of mar baravashi, aliba de rova, aliba de rova. So this is mar baravashi explaining the question that rova had. That's where Amrullah ill milsa de pshita le la baye mi boy le la rova. It's only according to this nusach where Rava has a question on what Abaya understood for sure that there's no din knas. The ill lishna kama, because according to the first lotion of Rava's question that we just learned, Miv should cheat the Rava, the Misa Lemavka. Rava's sure that Misa does not take away the din knas. The whole question is, is the father Yajan serve? Uda Loika Abaya, and surely Rava is arguing on Abaya, because Mam Shalai Vodra. And the whole shayla is the bagger bekever come a boyle. The whole question was if she became a boyish or she would have become a boyish after she died, and, and at that time they tried to go to bed, Abu Misa. But if she dies, Kosman Shloy Bogra, Polaga da Baye, Vamele Mafka Bechayev, if there was no bagger involved, let us she died, and we got to bed, and before she would have been a boyish. Rava holds for sure the father would claim. But the whole question was if they waited too long to go to Besan, and by now she would have been a virus. But what if they didn't wait so long to go to Besan? She died in Naira, they went right away to Besan. Surely Rava would hold that the father would be able to get that claim. Now, let's just analyze again what, what's Mari Baravashi's question. Mari Baravashi learns this boy Lahaki. Misa Oisa Bagris or Ain Oisa Bagris. Does Misa make Bagris or not? Which is basically the question. Does Misa make a bagris and therefore there's no collecting on it or not? So therefore, the, the difference is quite simple. According to Rava, if she dies when she's a Naira and they quickly run to Bezin, there's no question about it. The father gets to be the glass. According to the Mayabar of Ashi's version, the question is, is the, the moment she dies, she's considered a, bag, a, a bagaris. By definition, if she's a bagaris, she will not, they will not be able to collect anymore. Because of what Rava said earlier. So if the question is if Misa makes her into beggars or not, in essence, the question is, if she dies, does it automatically release the perpetrator from paying the knas? So Rava has it for a question. Abaya held it for sure releases the perpetrator from making the knas. And the Gorgas just take, boy, you mean Rava may Abaya. Rava had a question of Abaya. What if first she was... Nenas, so she was Nenas before, while she was a regular Naira Basula Asher Loya Yerasa, and then she had Erisin before Hamad the Bedin. Now, what would the Halacha be? So, Prashi, the question is, Mi Does she get the Knas, or does her father get the Knas? Omer Lay, so Abaye responded to Rava, Miksiv. If you look at the Psukim, the Psukim say, if this woman, who is a Bisula, who is a Naira, who is a Shaloya Rasa, gets violated, then there's a Chi of Knas. The Torah doesn't say the Asherloya Arusa when it's in reference to the payment. So it doesn't say the Lassan La Via Naira, Asherloya Arusa. So therefore, it should be irrelevant. It's all that counts is at the time of the violation, was she a Rusa or not? Was she a Basula or not? Was she a Naira or not? But once once she's violated, and now it's merely a question of enforcing the halacha, there, the fact that she's a Rusa or not should have absolutely no impact. So, Miksiv and Nasan Lavia Naira, Shalai Rusa? No. The Pasuk is referring to when she was violated, what her condition was. According to your logic, of Rava, how the Tanya it says in the Brisa, Ba'ala Venisis, if a woman was violated when she was a Naira, and then not only did she become an Arusa, she also became a Nasua, which for sure pulls her out of her father's domain. So the Allah is La'atma. There she gets the Knas herself, because at the time that the Knas was awarded, she was not in her father's domain. Why don't you ask the same question? All it says is that she has to be under her father's domain when she was violated. Where does it say anything about being in her father's domain 
at the time of the payment. Zotamur Hachiashtim. There's a very big difference. Hosan, Hoilu Bagris Moitzia, Mishusav. We know Bagris takes her out of the Shusav. Once she's a Bagaris, the father could no longer marry her up. We also know Vinisu in Moitzia and Mishusav. We also know that if a woman marries and she's in the Sua, she's also no longer in her father's Kayach. So therefore, Ma Bagris, Baalea, Ubagrela Atma. Just like a Bagaris, the Allah is, if someone violates a Naira Besula Shaloya Rasa, yet before they go to the entire to award the Knas, she matured, she became a Bagaris. There, everybody agrees that the father doesn't get the Knas, rather, the daughter gets the Knas. So let's say Nisun, which also removes her from her father's domain, should accomplish the same thing. Af Nisun, Bo Eleven, this is Latma. So therefore, by Nisun, there's a good argument to say that she should get paid herself, but not an Arusa. Why should an Arusa? Why, why, if the fact that you became an Arusa, why should that remove the Knas from her father and give it to her? Ella Erison, Mika Mafi, Rishusa da Avla Damri. Erison does not completely remove her out of the domain of her father. And I'm going to illustrate a halacha that shows that the father still has control over his daughter when she's an Arusa before she becomes an Asua. Because at Nan we learned, Naira Hamurasa, you have a girl who is Murasa and she made a nether. So who could be made for her nether? When she's a young girl, when she's a Naira, the father could be made for her nether. When she's an Asua, the father has no control over her nether. Only her husband will be made for her nether. But when she's an Arusa, you need to have far off both the father and the husband. So you see, an Arusa is still somewhat in the riches of her father. So therefore, it's a very legitimate question to ask if she was violent and then she became an Arusa, would that remove her from the father's control and she will get the Knas herself? Or do you say that she's still in the riches of her father, like you see she is in the Durham somewhat, and therefore the father still gets her Knas? That was the question. I'm sorry? We don't have an answer. It, it, it remains a question. It remains a question. So let's see the Gemara. Mahu. Mi havi lahavi la'atma. This was a woman who was violated, and then she became an Arusa. Bagris might say Mishasav. We know Bagris takes her out of the Rishasav. The Prashi. Eloi metzinu. Shezich saloi toira bevitai. Elo mecher bekatnos. The only rights that a father has, that we see the Torah gives a father, is when she's a katana, he can sell her as a maidservant. Vesar shvach and other benefits to going knas on my He gets her knas as well as any um, work that she performs and anything she earns. The father gets as well while she's a naira. Kidi alfinu perk naira avul babagris. But once a woman is fully matured, loy ashkechan, you don't find any schus whatsoever that the Torah ever gives a father. The chivin the loy zichsa loy Torah. So since the Torah has never given any rights. To a father over his daughters of Lagris, Anan Lan So therefore, if she's only standing bedin after she's a Blagris to claim from this person who was my answer, there's no reason at all why we should think that the father should have any rights to that Knas. Unasuan Maitsian Mishasa. We know when a woman becomes a Masua, she leaves the domain of her father. Where do you see that? He's an Ashkechan by Forest Nadarim. You find when it comes to halachas of the Forest Nadarim, because Mandalay Nisus, as long as she wasn't in the Sua of Via Mefer, the father still has the Koyach over her Nadarim. Who Mishanisus, but once she's on the Sua, Ein Yachal Haver, the father has no control over her Nadarim. Bala Kishi Naira Ubaver. What happens if the perpetrator violated when she was a Naira and then she became fully matured? La Atma, she gets to keep it. The Chsiv and Nasan Ish. So we learn in Naira Hibishas Nasina. We don't look at the time of the violation which triggered the Chiv. Rather, we look at the time that it was actually awarded. And that makes sense because Knas means, Mumin means right away at the time of the event, she would have had these rights. Knas isn't awarded until Bezin awards it because we know Moid of Knas is Potter. There's even a way to get out of the Knas. So it's interesting because in this case, where she was violated as a naira, and then 
uh, she became a boigress, and then they went to Besdin. So the Nezek Tsar Ripu Shavas and Boishas would go to the father because that was triggered already when she was an Ayah. And even if she died, the father gets Nezek Tsar Ripu Shavas and Boishas. But the Knas goes to her. They both have to do it. Okay, let's see the next Mishnah, beautiful Mishnah. Hamafata Noisen Shloishadvarim. Hamafata pays three payments, and the Mishnah is going to explain. We are honest, but someone who's violates, someone who's, who's, who's a, a rapist, Arba makes four payments. Hamafata Noisen Boishas Upkam. He has to be Boishas Upkam. The, the Mishnah is going to explain it. So Boishas is he humiliates a girl by, by taking her basulim, and pagam is the nezek. She's worth that much less. It, so there's nezek and there's pagam. Um, there's no tsar, there's no ripoy, and there's no shevis. Uknas moisifalot. And of course, the knas is over and above the boishish and the pagam. Oinus, I'm sorry. I, I, I read that like, like, like a terrible amount. Noisen boishish and pagam uknas. Period. Most of love oinus. An oinus makes an additional payment over and above the boishish pagam and kenas, and that is shenoshin is a tsar. He causes her pain, and therefore the ma'anis has to pay tsar as well. Ma bein oinus lemafata. What are the differences between oinus and mafata? We just listed off one is tsar, but there's going to be more. Is a oinus noishin is a tsar, but mafata any noishin is a tsar. The oinus pays for her pain. The mafata does not. And and the Gemara is going to drill down a little bit uh, into understanding why. The Pasuk tells us that an Anis has to pay Knas and he has to marry her and stay married to her. So therefore, he immediately pays the Knas and then he marries her. But by Mefata, it says, he, if he marries her, he doesn't have to pay Knas. He only has to pay Knas if he doesn't want to marry her. So therefore, I'm a Fata Mafata would only pay when he divorces her. The Gemara is going to ask, he hasn't married her yet. What do you mean, the Yotzi? It should say that Mafata pays Knas if he decides not to marry her, not if he's divorcing her. An Oynes has to drink the Kosh. Otis is like a flower pot. Otis not, right? An Oynes has to drink the flower pot that he sowed. In other words, he's forced to marry this woman. But Mafata, but a Mafata has an option. If he wants to divorce her, he can. Which, once again, the Gemara is going to ask, he never married her. But we know it means that he has the option to marry her. If he doesn't want to marry her, he pays the knas. But he has the option not to marry her. What does it mean? To what extent do we force someone to marry this woman? Even if she is a, a woman who lives, she's somewhat disabled. Even if she's blind, even if she doesn't have such beautiful skin, nevertheless, he's forced to marry her. Uh, if he took advantage of a disadvantaged person, now he's going to have to become that person's spouse forever. What if he found in her at Varerva? Meaning, she became usher to him because she, um, she, uh, she was Mazana Tachta. Or she is a woman who cannot marry. For instance, she's a mamzeris. So there's a love for him to marry her. So then even a ma'anis is not allowed to stay married to this woman. She should be to him a wife. Isha Ruila, which we actually learned earlier in the parish. What does that mean, Isha Ruila? But a kopan, if it's a chavi lavin, he cannot stay married to her. So, Frank the Gemara. So, I just want to just point out normally there's five Tashlumen, Nezak, Tsar, Ripoy, Shevis, and Boishas. So, we're talking about Nezak here. There's a discussion of Tsar for Ma'anis, and there's a, a, a payment of Boishas, which we talked about as well. But Ripoy and Shevis, there isn't any, because Ripoy, this woman doesn't require any type of healing. She doesn't require any medicine bills to be paid. And Shevis, there's no reason for it to be off from work. She can go, she can go to work the next day. Right, so therefore, so therefore, we're only discussing those three payments. So, Frank Matar Demai, what type of pain is there when someone is ma'anas a woman? Amar you know what the tsar is? When someone violates a woman, he's not taking her gently; he's throwing her on the floor and jumping on. Her. So that's the tsar. Shechavta al gabetar, because he threw her on the floor. 
Frank the Gemara, how could you say that that's the Tsar of a Ma'anis? A Ma'anis pays Knas across the board no matter what. But not necessarily that he always treat her so violently. Are you going to say that if the Ma'anis pushes her down on a nice, comfortable bed, there he won't have to pay for Tsar? And if you want to say, yes, correct, that when our Mishnah said that a Ma'anis gives Tsar, it's only if he was violent with her and he hurt her in the process. But if he was gentle with her on a nice, comfortable, soft bed, then there would be no issue. But Tanya, we learned, not like that. Rabbi Shimon ben Yudah, I'm a Mishum Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon ben Yudah is a dissenting opinion. The Tanakam holds you paid Tsar. And Rabbi Shimon ben Yudah has a dissenting opinion, and he says, Onyus ain't a Mishalom is a Tsar. Onyus doesn't pay Tsar. You know why? Mipnesha Soifa lit Tsar Takas Baila. She's a Besula now, losing her Besula, and there's some pain there. Well, that's going to happen to her eventually anyway. So she's going to have to go through this. So she, he made her go through it earlier, but eventually she's going to go through it anyway. So he didn't cause her any pain that she would have otherwise never had. So therefore, so therefore, there's no chiyav of tzar. But with, but obviously, the chachamim told her back. Amrulai, the chachamim told her back. Ain't a diamond of velas ba'inus, lo nevelas barotzim. You cannot compare when she's going to lose her besulim to her husband, who she loves, who she wants to have relations with. with. That's that's not a pain. But if she's being forced and violated, that's where there's pain. So you see the home hold that there is a din tsar, and you see the din tsar has nothing to do with being thrown on the floor. You see the tsar has to do with something to do with her basula or something to do with the act. Because if it was about, if it was only about chibut karka, if the only reason why there's pain is on chibut karka, you cannot say such a thing that soifel is tarat is bailo, because her husband's probably not going to treat her violently. Ella Amr of Nachman Amr Rabba Baravua, what is the tsar we're talking about? Tsar shall peace or Before he's bala, he has to spread open his her legs. And I guess there's some level of pain in that. And this Novi is admonishing Klaisro and saying that you you run from avoid desire to avoid desire like a woman who sleeps around and will open your legs for anybody who passes by. So you see, you see, whenever you're saying, you're willing to inconvenience yourself and discomfort yourself just to be with any of our desire. So that demonstrates that the opening of the legs um, in preparation for a bia is a discomfort, and that's the tsar that you have to pay extra for a ma'anis. I don't understand. That, that, that opening of the legs happens by mafut as well. So why wouldn't a mafata pay knas? A mafut is a woman who was seduced. She willingly is engaging in this act. So there, the little discomfort is welcomed by her because she wants to act. So if someone says, Karash Yiroyin Shali, I let you tear my begging. I let you tear my begging. Be potter and be pot. So it's like she is letting him do it. She's a Naira. She doesn't get the knas. It's not up to her. The Avuan in it's her father's. So that's not Pshat. It's not Pshat that there's an actual pain here, but she's Moichel. Because she doesn't have the right to be Moichel. Elo Amor Nachman, Amor Rabba Baravua, Pikhaisha Ben Aimis, the smart women understand the psyche of a woman. And they say, Mufuta Ainla Tsar. And Mufuta does not have Tsar. Even that side of, of spreading of the legs, that's not called Tsar. Frankly, more, but it's physically not true. Vaka Chazin in the Isla. We know that there's a Tsar in spreading of the legs. Amr Abaye, Amrliyein, my mother told me, and Abaye's mother wasn't really his mother, it was a woman who raised him. So she also told him about the birds and the beasts. So she was explaining to him how it works. And she told him, even though there's a little bit of a discomfort when the woman's legs are spread, don't worry about it. It's Kemaya Chamima or the Karcha. It's like a bald guy taking a hot shower. So for a second, when the hot water hits his bald head, there might be a slight discomfort, but he wants that warm shower. So he welcomes it. No one's going to not take a hot shower because of the slight discomfort of it hitting his head. Unfortunately, I, I can't explain this Kemaya well, 
because I, I don't know, I don't relate to it. But uh, but uh, the Gemara is saying when you want a geshmak a warm shower, the little discomfort. I'll say that the the the, the cold water that hits you first while the shower is warming up. So that I'm willing I'm willing to suffer with without a problem because I want my warm shower. Rav Amar Amar Li Basra Pchista. So Rav Amar got his chos and shmuz from the daughter of Reb Um and, and she said it's Kirivda de Kosilta. When someone goes to the Makis Dam, I guess when they used to do bloodletting, it made them feel good. So there's a little prick, a pinprick. That little pinprick um, is something that people are willing to accept because they want the benefit of the of the uh, bloodletting. It's like when I take a blood test and they're digging and cracking and ripping my elbow to shreds. And they said, no, this doesn't, this doesn't hurt at all. I said, it doesn't hurt you at all, but it hurts me at all. Right? The daughter of Abba Surah told me, Kinamo Akusha If you have hard bread but you're hungry, you'll go through the, the scratching through your throat of the hard bread because you want to be satiated. So therefore, I'm a footer, when someone wants the general situation, he'll gladly accept the little inconveniences that come with it. So therefore, there's no Khi Tsar. But a woman who doesn't want this and she's been violated, well, then every little part of it. Every little part of it is a tsar. I, 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 I can't help but remembering reading like the testimony of women who were violated, especially from some famous people. So one of the victims wrote, I, 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 I can, I'm still for echoed from his disgusting breath, right? So if you don't want that person, every part of that person is, is disgusting to you and there's a tsar. But if you want that person, then it wouldn't be tsar. Is this his wife? He never married her yet. So what does it mean? Say what the Mishnah means, if he releases her meaning, if he doesn't marry her. What does that mean? By Mephata, any one of them, the father has a right to object, the daughter has a right to object, and the and the perpetrator has the right to object. Tani Namiachi, we learned as well a Brisa that supports this. Even though the Mafata gives the 50 scholar when he decides that he was doesn't want to marry her, but the Boishes of the Pagam, he has to pay right away. She has the right to say, I don't want to marry him. And the father also has a right to say, I will not let you marry my daughter. I understand why by Mefuta, the father has the right to stop her. The father doesn't want to give her. I only know that her father can prevent the marriage from happening. He asks Mommy Nine, how do we know that she also has a right to object? I don't want this man. There's a double ocean in Moin Yemoin. You might be come up and anyone who objects to the marriage can prevent the marriage by Amafutza. What about Oynes? Why do we say that anybody could block it? Bishlami Ihi, I understand why she could say, I don't want this man. Sia is Masha Midaita. She should be his wife, provided that that's what she wants. Where do you see Bechalal that the father has any opinion here at all regarding the Anusa marrying his daughter? It's not fair. If I didn't do the Aveyor and I wasn't an honest woman, then the father could object to me marrying her. If I force myself on her and did an Aveyor, that should be able to bypass the approval of the father. That's not Mustafa. That's a bias. Rav Amar as a Kabbal Chaymer. Someone who's a woman, he didn't violate the will of the girl. She was willing. He only violated the will of her father. Nevertheless, both her and her father could prevent the marriage. Oynis, which is even worse, he violated both her will and his father and her father's will. Like Kalshka, and surely the father should be able to prevent it. So we have two different arguments as to why Bayama Anis, the father, could prevent the marriage. What's the difference? Rabbi didn't like a bias for of Shaloya Hechoitin Why? 
even though now he can bypass, as a Ma'avitz, he can bypass the will of his father-in-law, we don't consider that Chaitin Yiskar, because we hit him with a massive fine that he had to give to the father. Abai Le'amakarava, Abai didn't say that like Rava, because Mifata, the Iyu Matsuma Akiv, of Iyunami Matsuma Akiv. By Mifata, where he has a choice of whether or not he wants to marry this woman, it's logical to say that the father of this woman has the same rights to prevent the marriage. But only is the Iyule Matsuma Akiv, but only is where he himself does not have a right to refuse the marriage, because by Onyes it says he's mukhuyev to marry her, therefore it's mustaber that avi anami loy matzamakim. Maybe then the father cannot be makim either. Tanya to bring another brisa. Avabi shamur Onyes noisin miyad. Even though, even though we said that an Onyes has to pay knas right away, nevertheless kishiyotzi who ain law a law of klum. So let's think about this for a second. A man has to pay the knas. The knas we know is the same amount that you give for a tuba. So basically, the knas really means that you're prepaying the tuba. So therefore, if someone gave knas and then married this woman, and then later he decided to divorce her, he doesn't have to pay her tuba because that knas was already prepaid. Frankly, what I mean, Yoitzi, and Onis, Amis is not allowed to divorce her. Me, Mati Mapik law, is he allowed to release her? He's not allowed. It's So after Gemara, Ema say he. Ain't no love club. If she says, I don't want to be married to you anymore. So she says, I don't want you. He can't divorce her, but she can walk out. So if she walks out, then she cannot claim the tuba from him. Mace, um, Yotza. Same thing. If, she, if, 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 if he dies, she cannot claim any, 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 uh, knas, Yotza, because of Knasa, Bixubasa. She doesn't get to make a claim anymore. For her ksuba, because she had already had it prepaid, that was the case of knas. yes ksuba She will still have the ksuba of a geula. So we don't totally eliminate her ksuba. She still gets some ksuba. So what's the machloikis if there's any ksuba left, or if we say that the knas will will make him prepay the ksuba and there's no ksuba? The ma'akim of the more very simple. Rabbanon savri time and my takini rabbanon ksuba. Why did the Rabban Mechalal make the Allah of Tshuva for all women? It's Kadei Shiloi Tei Kalabain of Loitzia. It's so that a person won't so easily make the decision to divorce his wife because it's going to cost him a pretty penny. But an Anusa doesn't need that, that, that incentive to keep your wife. Why? He can't divorce her anyway. So therefore, this sheet will hold that there's no Din Tshuva at all if he ends up divorce her because she wants to lock because we don't need to create a ksuba for a man who anyway cannot divorce his wife. You ever heard of something called constructive dismissal? If my boss harasses me to the point that I have no choice but to quit, I could sue for wrongful dismissal, even though I quit. So that's exactly what happens here. Sure, he can't divorce her, but he could make her life so miserable that she'll say, I want out. So therefore, to prevent him from doing something like that, we still require a ksuba vamana so that he will avoid trying to scare his wife away from staying married to him because he knows it's going to cost him the ksuba vamana. Okay, let's stop here. And we'll be mam shech mitzvah tomorrow. So, Bensi, how are you? How's Eretz Yisrael? Bensi's with us. Hashem. Yeah? Did you, did, you, did you hear what happened by the Chayzer last night? Yeah, my uh, actually my uncle and aunt were there right when it happened, and uh, Baruch Hashem, uh, at that time there was just sirens going off. But it happened; the impact happened so quickly that uh, Baruch Hashem, um, there, there weren't so many people hurt, but it was terrible. Okay, this was here, Mr. Stavis. How was your Shabbos there? It was probably I mean, beautiful. At the Hoi in the Shabbos, Baruch Hashem, beautiful. beautiful. Wow, beautiful. I, I was by the I was by the cliff on Friday afternoon. It was it was pretty busy. Wow! Wow! Okay, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy every nanosecond. Chafarayim. And remember, remember to daven for me. I have an account here, like I told you. Did you say Simon? 100%. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.